G'day, how you all going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video, just putting my gloves on. And I'll get some sizes on the canvas there like that in inches. And um, we'll also get some colours running up the screen as well. Very little amount of colours in this painting today. And it's going to be one of those paintings like, you know what? I like that and I reckon I can do it. And I'm here to tell you, you bloody can do it, all right? It's going to be so easy. Follow my simple steps. And um, if you feel it's a bit too much for you, that's just your inner self saying, just need a bit of practice there, man, and you'll get there, okay? Because that's all it takes is a bit of practice, all right? So let's get on all the way over here. Got me a little tub of water there, so I don't have to keep going all the way down there if I've got to dip it in. I'm trying to make things easy for myself, eh? Because you need things to be easy. All right, let's get right into it. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but there's my horizon line. It's under halfway, and we're just going to have some beautiful sky, some distant mountains, and some subject matter right here to make a beautiful painting that'll pop onto your wall. Now, I've got my craft paint here. There's not going to be too many colours in this, because this is going to be a uh, yellow ochre or a raw sienna two-tone colour, okay, but just with my sky colour. So I'm going to have a bit of a grey bluey grey value sky but I need to prime it up first and you can see me mountains I've got there now I do want a like a, let's say an Asian inspired water scene here that's what I'm going for now this is why the mountains are so jagged up in this sky normal mountains that we paint are not like that but these Asian mountains they're nice and high and peaky so I've got them like that all right and I just want to give the sky its colour up there, okay? Now I've just wiped that putter on a brush and I want to grab some of the blue and get this grey blued up a bit with me putter on a brush. And I'm mixing it with this putter on a brush because it don't muck around, it gets things done. All right, and that's what I love about this brush. So we've got a beautiful grey blue sky there, cerulean blue. And let's get our sky. Now I'm crisscrossing it into all that woven surface of the canvas there. Pick more up. Get it right in there. Don't worry about brushing it on first. Just get it right in there, like so, like so, like so. That'll do. Now I want to smooth it out like a gentleman. And I've got kind of a overcast sky. But the rest of the paint's going to be... The rest of the painting is going to be like yellowy brown colour. It's not going to be realism colours. There's our sky. Do you want to put a moon, some clouds, the sun, whatever in there, a bit of a glare? You can if you want. So I've got some titanium white. Not this craft white, titanium white. I'm just going to grab that on my finger. The sky is still wet. And we'll put a hint of the sun glaring through the overcast cold sky. Uh, probably about here. So I'm just going to... Stab it on like that and mist it around. Okay, pick up some more. Work out the value. I'm starting from the middle so I can always pull out. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now I don't want it a perfect round shape, if anything. It's like that shape there. I will grab my blending brush and just slowly dance that into the blue paint there. Whispering it right out into nothing, see there? Getting it right out to nothing. Look at one half that I've done compared to the other half. Play with it. This just adds extra value to your painting. See the difference from this half to that half? And I'm going to do the same on the other half there. These skies sort of make for beautiful values within your painting, I feel. There we go. I'm getting carried away here uh, while the sky is still wet. I'm going to pick up some more of that titanium white and probably put some kind of cloud body here. Just something from the top, leaving an opening in the sky. That'll do. Grab my blending brush and I'm just going to blend the top of that to buggery into our sky. We've just got some kind of value in our sky that's adding more value to the painting there we go now i've got to get a bit more body into that because as you can see it looks a bit like a line and you don't want your clouds looking like lines all over your painting so we'll 
why that happened actually I didn't have enough paint on the palette there we go I'm doing it again and I'm gonna blend this the body of it nice bits of glare in there beautiful Um, we'll try one more here so that doesn't look too odd I've just created a simple body of a cloud there and now I just want to blend it this ain't going to have no yumminess no weather within it it's just this value in the sky That paint is very wet still, that's why I'm able to blend it like this. There we go, that's it. It's just something, nice elements in the sky there. I'm finishing it off with left and right strokes like that. There we go. Okay, now I've got the raw sienna, so I'm going to start off here and mix up a light value for our distant mountains. This is the colour of the painting now, this raw sienna. Okay, so we'll... I'll keep adding white into that until it gets the value that I want. And I'm using this brush because this is the one I'm going to paint it on with. So we've got our distant mountain. I'll come off the painting and down. I'm going to create me when my nice sweeping mountains within here. Now I didn't dry that sky. And if I feel I have to, well then I'm going to. So I'll get all this painted on there first, just for some distant mountain. And this can come up, jug it up there, and up here like that. Because to me, I could be wrong, but they're very up and high, aren't they, over in the Asian countries there, like Thailand and Vietnam and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to paint, no, I'm going to dry the bottom half of the sky because I can feel I've got to struggle to cover the sky colour up and I don't want to do any struggling with me painting, okay? So I've dried the sky a bit and I'm going to leave that sit. Now I'm going to grab some more of my craft paint. This time I've got retarder in it because I want to keep the water half wet longer to pull in my simple reflections. They're going to be simply done in this. And we'll get the bottom half coated in this. Now this is going to keep the canvas wet hopefully longer. There's my horizon line there, just like that. Beautiful. And now I'll stroke that like a gentleman. As I'm stroking it, I'm feeling, oh, it's a bit thick here, and I'm, I'm thinning it out to keep it all the same thickness. There we go. Now I'll pick up that sky colour. So here it is here. I'll pick that up. I've just wiped my brush, and I'll get this onto the canvas now. Let's start at the bottom, there we go. I've pulled some more blue into it. Get it up there. Now I might have to mix more, I'll see how I go. I think I might just make it, which I think I'm just making it, yep. There we go. There's me simple water. It's crisscrossed into all that cloth there. And I'll just finish it off with some strokes like that. And what, oh, if you want, do you want a darker band in there just to make water bands? You can do that. I'll just put it on there like that. I'll wipe the brush and I'll stroke them, okay? We've got some darker bands there. And see that element? Here's another good idea we can do. See that element of the sun there? We could probably put that all in the water as well. So I'll grab the white again. Now there's me thing there, so I'll just come from about here and I'm gonna go like that in a straight line. It's gotta be a straight line. I'm stamping it on, stamping that white on. Now there's a big ridge there. I don't want that there, so I'll manipulate that into the water. Now let's keep that straight in. All right, then we'll just use our water brush and we'll water fire that, okay? Water fire. 
wipe the brush. I don't want it too distorted if I can help it. Wipe the brush. There we go. Take your time. Because if you wipe the living buggery out of it, it disappears. Beautiful. Now back to these mountains here. I'll bring that to that there. I don't want to go into the watercolour because it's wet and it's going to be very hard to dry. Now we're going to have some more ground in front of there, so don't worry. Now let's work out if you want something to sit behind. I'm going to pick up a bit of white, okay, and I'll probably put this mountain behind there. So I'll just do that, scrumble it in. The paint's drying up, so you only have a small window to do this. And probably just a little bit here as well, sinking this one back. So we're just getting a bit of brighter value there, just to sink that back. Now wipe the brush, pick up the other colour again, and bring it, bring it in front of there, okay? Just gives it, so it's not like a flat, one tone mountain out there. That's there, and we can bring this one nice line straight there like that. I've just marbled in some of the darker colour. If we want to get some of the darker value, where are we if I can get some on my brush? There we go. This is all in the background. That's it. That'll do it. Now I've got another hake brush here and I'm just grabbing some more of that colour. Just so as I can pull some simple reflections in the water. Of course my water is quite wet. So I'll start here. So what I'm doing, I'm putting it onto the mountain like that. And then I want to pull it down. Getting at the geometrical shape to suit the mountain up the top there. That's coming off the painting there. And then work your way along the water's wet, which is allowing this to just pull down quite simply. Now it doesn't have to be exactly the same height because it's a reflection. Reflections can be distorted. I might have to fix up the um, reflection there. Get the edge of it done first and then build it up to the solid bit there. I might have to fix up the, um, the moon's reflection. So if you're watching this video, do this before you do the moon's reflection. Now keep them nice and straight. And look at that, we've got a hair in there, so we'll get that out of there. I'll pick up some of the white paint, finish doing my, there like that. And now we're going to, let's just brush that that way. Wipe it. It's a bit thick, I'm thinning it down, there we go. Wipe the brush. Now I'm going to put my darker trees in front of this and before I do I just want to get some distant mist so to the height I'm going to have them. I've got some white on a scrumbling brush. The paint's still a bit rubbery and wet. I might have to dry it. We'll see how we go. And I just want to get this uh, just above the height where my next row of trees are going to be and that'll create the mist. Do a bit at a time, don't go 
too far ahead of yourself otherwise it could dry and you'll have trouble trying to blend in those hard edges now what I'm going to do is I've got a, a round hog bristle round brush and I've got my raw sienna dark but I've got some burnt umber here I need a, a darker value of this first to put on so as I can put my lighter colors over it okay so we could start from let's say the middle here I want it all different sizes so start from there now there's a horizon line pull it down pull it down get to the horizon line and pull it down like that okay let's pick up some more this is going to be all different heights get to the horizon line which is there try and get that shape here there a little bit and then just gently pull it down down to the horizon line again which is there go a bit under your horizon line and then pull it down pull it down it's very dry so that's why I'm doing a bit at a time I'll come up here I'm, I'm randomly getting this randomly shaped this is all the dark color might have to mix up some more I will do get it to there get it to there I'm going to grab me my putter on a brush watch this get that to the thing we want and I can get into there and there's a horizon line pull it down but that's got blue paint on it I'll find this one Pull it down with the horizon line or push it. I don't like the way that's getting the lighter value in there, so I'll use this brush. I want all that dark. Now I'm going to clean my putter on a brush to do the other side, and you'll see the difference, okay? So we'll do this side. We'll come up here, come along, get it to the water's edge get it to the shape you want grab the putter on a brush find your horizon line and just pull it down there we go get your top in there I'm going to do the top first just like that get it to the horizon line block it all in it's all dark the way I want it needs to be dark and then we're going to put that down pull a bit pull a bit getting the top shape roughly mirror imaged into the water there like so and just pulling it down I'm putting my fingers on it because the paint underneath is pretty much dry so I'm trying to allow for that to smear there we go here we go I've got to put this back in there now so I'll put it in there and I'll just use this brush to smear it Now I'm adding more burn umber to that raw sienna dark there to get even a, just a tad darker to bring some forward to the edges of the painting. So I want maybe here like this, boom, I'll get the same in the water there, picking up my pull down brush and pulling that down straight away. If you let it go too long, it's going to dry on you. Now with that round brush, just wipe it, okay, and bring it to a chiseled edge like that, all right? So the paint's made it gluggy. This is an old trick Len Hen done. I saw him do this and he showed me when I was in Chiang Mai visiting him a few years ago.
And what we're going to do, we're going to double load the brush. So we're going to get the raw sienna on one side, nice and dark, and we'll get the light on the other side. And we're going to highlight our trees now. And you want the, um, the, the, the bright color on top. We will start in the middle. And you go just a little bit over. And the more you tilt your brush, the more you can control that highlight. So we're going to start in the middle and we're going to dab dab strokes twisting the the highlight leaving some of that dark that we've put on there this is just trees okay like that and then we'll do the same in the water and pull them down load your brush up again the same in the water and pull them down Now we're going to grab more dark and more light. In the water, pull the watercolours down. Or even use a totally different brush to pull them down, okay? Now we'll start from here. See the white's not coming off, so I've got to tilt the brush. There we go. Leaving some of that dark there. Pull that down into the water. Load your brush up again. Up here. Pull that down. I've got to load the brush up again. Dark on one side, put a lot of paint on there and bright on the other side. And these are getting bigger. Now we'll go from the other side and then we'll bring those into the middle as well. So we're getting your umbrella shapes into the water, pull it down. Load your brush, dark on one side, light on the other. Not enough dark on that. Too much, there we go. And if anything, we're just sort of keeping them tilted into the middle of the painting. Pull them down straight away. Now I'm going to load that brush up again. And we'll get up here done. Turning the brush to get that light on there. Here we go. And follow the in the water there. Okay, I've got a flat brush and I'm picking up that dark colour again. And I want to put a couple of palms in there. And I want something maybe coming out of the jungle here if you can call it a jungle, <laughs> from this dark spot here, maybe something just coming right up to the sky colour there, and maybe something about here. Okay, and as you've seen me do simple palm trees, just give them some scratchy palm-like Prongs. And I always like to put something hanging down there. A little dangler. A little dangler. Pull down. Don't think about these. I just do them like that. And <laughs> hopefully this one's going to work. And then we just got to thicken up the, the middle bit because sometimes they can look a bit undernourished. So we just sort of give it some pointy, busy stuff there. That one's okay. Now we'll do the same in the water. So I wanna just lightly get it on my brush. I've got me put her on a brush ready to pull it down. And I wanna sort of 
lightly come and then pull that down. No, it didn't work. So what I'm going to have to do is scratch it in like so. Just to give it some kind of reflection, blurry reflection. Okay. So I can break it up. Okay, we're going to grab this dark color. I'll just grab it way over here. I'll put it onto the palette like that and I'll get some on the side of the knife and out here now we want to make a bank so keep this level bring it thick make a bank now we're making the bank with the dark color just like that pick up some more and we'll do the other side keeping it reasonably level I'll come from this edge because I'm digging into my paint there and I don't want to do that. And as it gets to the edge, the this can come a bit wider. Doesn't matter. Okay, this next bit I knifed on some of the craft paint white. I knifed it across the water to sink all the reflections down just to get a surface on top of the water. And we're just putting some trunks here. That'll do. Now just to finish it off, I'm grabbing some black, just pure black, get it a little bit wet. And I just want to put the slightest little hut in there. So I'll probably go about here and I'm going to just black it in. So I want a pretty much a rectangle shape like so. I've dried the painting so we're not going to be scratching and mudding up everything and we'll give it a bit of a roof so we're going to give it a bit of a gable roof like they have there right up here top ridge and down there and before I detail I'm just going from the actual structure and I want to just pull down some kind of shadow of it as well just like that okay now I want to get the Rossi in it bring that up to the roof there like that and just scratch in pretty much the highlighted areas of this roof and we're going to come down here just making a roof those blacks that we put there are making the depth now that i've got that there i just gotta lightly scratch this value into the water as well Come on you, get off the brush there, come that way. Now I want to get that white and highlight that colour and this will finish that little hut off. So we're going to lightly come across the top ridge with this brush and scoot our roof in any old way. I'm going to do it like this now. Get some more. And get some downward scratchy lines for the front face of it. 
and then we'll get those values in here as well. Now I'm grabbing a little detail brush and I'm probably just going to block in a little dark window and maybe something up here. Let's do a round one, eh? And I want to come in front of it just like so. And we'll put some kind of jetty light in front of it. And I'll just get that under the water there. Okay, what we can do is I'm just going to put probably some shimmer here and finish it off. And the best way of that is use the craft paint, put some water next to it like that. Grab yourself a flat face toothbrush. See how they're flat? It's not convex like this one or concave like that one. It's flat, okay? Now you start in the water and then you start pulling the white paint into the tip of the toothbrush. Not too much, okay? and see your toothbrush is loaded. If you've got it too thick, it won't flick out. Now, I just stuck a piece of paper there so I don't get any of this in the sky and work out your shimmer. Tr practice shimmering and um, putting bands in the water with it because if you have it uneven or the wrong way it could look wrong and you think no I don't like that but when you work out how to do it it's beautiful you don't want it too watery either but there we go I'll get a little bit more in there just up there that's it coming across the water Take that away. Okay, I'll whack a frame on this and see how she looks. I don't know what we'll call this. We want it some kind of lagoon or something, but it's just different colours. It's something fun to paint. All right, and that's not too shabby, is it? We've got a water scene here, decent sky, and some structures and elements that give it that artistic look. I could have done a better job with that little hut, but. Yeah, if you're going to do a hut like that, that's just out of my head. Look, find one and use it as a reference. You'll get the proper shadow areas, okay? But anyway, something like that is not too hard to do. And just remember, you can do that. All right, I hope you found something useful in this tutorial here. And if you did, be sure to check out the links in the description below. All my tutorials are for sale and there's prints available for the ones that are already sold, okay? Uh, give me the thumbs up, share, like and subscribe. And if you like what I'm doing, tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck and good on you.